Some people that graduated from college are going to have a tough time solving this simple math problem without using a calculator. However, there will be a lot of people that never went to college that are going to be able to easily knock this problem out and get the right answer. Let's take a look at the question. We have 8 minus 5 in parentheses times 7 minus 6 squared divided by 4. Okay, so the only rule here is no calculators, but if you think you know the right answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, come on over to my site, tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, here is the question. We have 8 minus 5 in parentheses times 7 minus 6 squared divided by 4. The key to solving this problem correctly is to do all of this work in the correct order. So let's take a look at these uh, mathematical operations in this problem. Now the first thing that we notice here is that we have some parentheses, and this means something in mathematics. And then we have a subtraction operator. Now this 7 outside of this uh, parentheses right here means multiplication. Then we have subtraction, and then here we have 6 squared. Now this is a power, and this little small number in a power is called an exponent. This big number down here is called the base, so we'll call this an exponent situation. And then we have division. Now, in order to do this problem correctly, you have to take a very specific order to do this work. And even if you are a little bit off, you will get the wrong answer. So in order to understand the correct order, you need to understand this thing right here, which is called PEMDAS. All right, so this is a checklist that goes from left to right, and this tells us the correct order of operations. Now, of course, these letters stand for something, but uh, before I walk through, and tell you what these uh, stand for, I'm gonna give you a nice little memory aid that you can remember PEMDAS by. And it goes like this. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. One more time, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, I don't know what Aunt Sally did, but uh, we thank her for her contribution to mathematics. All right, so this is how this works. So P stands for parentheses. So if your math problem has any parentheses, or brackets, or these type of brackets. So technically, this step right here is what we call grouping symbols, okay? So you can group numbers together with parentheses, brackets, or these type of squiggly brackets. Now, sometimes you have a situation in a math problem where you have uh, parentheses and you have brackets outside of those parentheses, and the way that works is you'll start from the innermost parentheses first and then work your way out. Okay, so this is step number one. Now, not every math problem will have parentheses, but if it uh, does, you're going to start there. Okay, so moving on is E. Now, E again stands for exponents, but you kind of think of that as powers. So if your math problem has any powers, you have to address that next. Okay, so now we have M, D, and S. Now, M stands for multiplication, D stands for division, A stands for addition, and S stands for subtraction. Now, uh, a really common mistake in basic mathematics is most people say, well, I have to take care of all multiplication and then move on to division like that. And this uh, is logical because it's easy to confuse how to work this PEMDAS checklist from left to right, but this is not how this works. So the next step is we're going to deal with any multiplication or division whatever we see first from left to right. In other words, if we have multiplication here, then division, we'll do it this way. But if we have division and then multiplication, we'll do it this way, okay? So it all depends on what you see from left to right. And then after you're finished with all multiplication and division, you take care of any addition and subtraction. Again, whatever you see first from left to right. Okay, so now that we understand the order of operations or PEMDAS, we can apply this to solve this problem. So here is the question, and now that we understand PEMDAS, this will be very easy. All right, so the first thing is, uh, do we have any parentheses? Now, of course, we do. 
So we have 8 minus 5 in parentheses, and we're going to do this one step at a time. So 8 minus 5, of course, is 3. So now our problem is 3 times 7 minus 6 squared divided by 4. All right, so once you do one step, you just kind of continue to rescan this PEMDAS uh, checklist, and then we'll move on to another step. Okay, so what is the next thing to do? Well, we took care of our parentheses. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. E2 Math Man, you still have a number inside of parentheses. Well, what this means is grouping symbols if there's like a mathematical operation, right? Like seven plus one. So once you simplify this down to one number, you continue to move on. Okay, so E stands for exponents or powers. So do we have any exponents or powers in this problem? Well, of course we do. We have six squared. All right, so six squared means take six and multiply it by itself. So that is 36. All right, so we're just kind of taking one step at a time. And we have three times seven minus 36 divided by four. All right, so what is the next step? Well, again, we just reference our PEMDAS checklist. So we took care of parentheses, we took care of powers. Now, do we have any multiplication or division? Yes, we have multiplication right here and we have division right here. So we have to be very careful and do whatever we see first from left to right, which is the multiplication. All right, so we have three times seven, which of course is 21. And now we have 21 minus 36 divided by four. Okay, so you're going to take care of any multiplication and division before you move on to any addition and subtraction. And this is going to be very easy. So 36 divided by four, of course, is nine. So our final step is 21 minus nine, which of course is 12, which is the correct answer. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, I'm gonna definitely give you a nice little happy face and an A plus any 100%. Now, if you went to college and you're like, hey, Mr. E2 Math Man, you're making me feel pretty bad that I went to college and I, you know, basically didn't get this uh, right. No big deal. I'm pretty sure you knew how to do this. You probably just forgot. All right. Now, if you didn't uh, go to college and got this right, well, congratulations for remembering your basic math, because this is really what we're doing here is uh, math that you learn kind of like at the middle school, certainly the high school level. Okay, so if you enjoyed this little video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. This really does help me out on YouTube. And if you're interested in learning mathematics from me, and even if you just kind of want to relearn some math, make sure to check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course, or maybe my Math Foundations course. Uh, you can find links to both of those courses in the description of this video. But if you are in a math course like pre-algebra, you can find links to those courses as well in the description. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.